Hi everyone, welcome back to some more Bayonetta on Non-Stop Infinite Climax. I'm... <laughs> uh, it's uh, completely unrelated, but I'm actually doing this video right now because I'm waiting for my new Nintendo 3DS XL to completely update so I can move on all my information into it. J just pointing that out right now because hardly anything happened in the previous chapter and hardly anything will happen in this chapter of Bayonetta. Although after this one, we'll finally actually move on with the story. John? Cereza? The little one? Tentacles? Why did it have to be tentacles? Okay, so that was an abrupt start to this chapter. There's, besides that one cutscene, which is again the flashback that we saw a million times before, r there really wasn't anything else to... There's nothing else to this chapter, really. And I'm just going to change my equipment right here to... Uh, I want this back. I'm trying to. Uh, we're gonna actually check out the Sai Fung in this chapter. And only this chapter, because uh, I've heard it's cool, just not that great anyway. Yeah, it looks actually pretty cool. It's too bad it's, it's one of the more annoying uh, weapons to unlock, because uh, it quite literally takes you. Uh, you have to beat 100 chapters on normal. If you want to be technical. You can actually do that straight from the prologue. You just do the prologue and then you restart it over 100 times without even moving on to chapter 1. But if you beat the game, all the chapters on every difficulty, it only amounts to roughly 80 chapters in total. And it, it doesn't count for the, the easy and uh, very easy attempts. So yeah, it takes a very long time to unlock this weapon. For what it's worth, it's extremely cool. Extremely cool, but I still prefer the sword and I might as well I really want to get used to the sword because I'm gonna need to use this like we're gonna be using an uber variant of the sword later on You're dead and you are finished Stop resisting it will be all over soon and other insensitive comments like that. Also, I believe uh, the cutscene uh, when Bayonetta was talking about those tentacles, that was uh, your preview, one of your previews to the upcoming boss of next chapter. Not a very good one, if you ask me. Anyway, you drop down here, and if you aim carefully, you can, well, you, yeah, I missed completely, but you can hit one of these guys if you aim carefully, I think. Ah, oh, come on. Yeah, sometimes these guys attack you without you noticing. If you press RR in the air, by the way, I just figured this out, you'll actually dash into an enemy using crow form. Yeah, it's crow form. I, I've i said several times that it may be a raven form. No, it's crow form. Always is. Also, I accidentally activated one of the cogs right there. 
Didn't mean to. Uh, is verse two over? No, it is not. One of the ravens, I mean crows, will appear near one of the cogs once this verse ends. Some of the enemies only appear once you go uh, near these familiar places, by the way. If you want to get the maximum amount of points, you may want to do that. I want torture attacks bonus points. Yeah, I'm going to be fast-forwarding through some parts uh, that I have nothing to say about occasionally. Because it's pretty obvious what I'm supposed to do here. Anyway, yeah, this is the finale of this verse. Gracious and glorious. You can actually... One of them is the fire one and the other one is the lightning one, by the way. They're not the exact same type. They even have slightly different colors. Come on, you die. I actually... I've theorized something. I believe these enemies are actually vulnerable in the air. There we go. Also, I may have not have mentioned this before, but uh, if you dodge too often, Bayonetta will uh, like uh, flip into I'm trying to pick this thing up. Bye. Bayonetta will flip uh, like in an over-exaggerated manner, and that will prevent her from dodging again, or she'll be perma locked into position that you cannot recover from. Come on, buddy. I'm just gonna torture attack him. I was trying to activate his friend's weapon, because it is the fire one, but he wasn't giving me the opportunity. It's too bad, I guess. Alright. Did I platinum? Did I not? Also, did he drop his own weapon? Really? Or no, that was the raven. The, the crow, I mean. <laughs> it appears right there, where I, where I finished the verse. And where I got a gold, so you know what? I'm not gonna... I did two half times in the previous chapter because I was getting lots of platinums. But this time, uh, I don't think I'll be doing that. It was just a one-off thing for me to suddenly do half times all of a sudden. Not to mention I don't really like any of the half times in this chapter. Oh, and there's a number in chest right up here. It, it, it would originally contain either a Moon Pearl or a Numbran Witch Heart. A Broken Witch Heart. It's always Broken Witch Hearts. The only complete Witch Hearts you can find are the ones from Rodan. Am I saying his name correctly? Because it's uh, in French? I would say Rodan, for sure. Or in whatever my French accent would make it sound like. But in the beginning of the game, you hear Enzo say Rodan or something to that effect, so I'm struggling to say it in the proper accent, I believe. Anyway, yeah, first half time is right there. And a numbered chest that contains, I believe, a moon pearl. This is a not that that's an optional area that I went to, by the way. Normally you would be tempted to rotate the control stick counterclockwise, which would lead you to the proper sequence that you're supposed to go through. But once you go past a certain part, you cannot come back over here. Like right here. This, if you drop down here, cannot go back. As far as I know, it even, it even checkpoints for you. Anyway, more harmonies right here, I believe. Yep. Time to go vroom! Wow, I completely failed using that. But then again, it, it's not that effective. Come on, rockets. Uh, these guys have such weird attack patterns. They, they, they seem to just decide randomly. Maybe not. I, I mean, I'm, I'm just, I'm just jawing right now because I am so bad at dealing with these guys. But geez, I don't like that they're always in the air and they, sometimes they, their flash of light happens out of nowhere to me. Come on, he's just out of place. Right? Ah! Get out. That was such a poor performance on my part. What did I get? A gold. <laughs> I'm surprised. Anyway, there's a r crow right around here in hard mode. Non-stop non infinite climax, though. 
No, there is always this guy, and no, no matter which difficulty you face him in, though, he's much weaker than the actual Fortitudo you fight in the actual story mode. But what's most important is that when you see this guy for the first time, you'll most likely think that you're already almost finished at the game, and that because it's already recycling bosses like this. Well, guess what? This isn't the first time they're going to be reusing him. They're going to reuse him one more time. And guess what? We're also fighting Temperentia uh, again already. He's also much weaker, fortunately. However, unlike uh, Fortitudo, this is not the... We're not going to be seeing him recycled one more time. We're going to be seeing him recycled two more times. Fun. It's a good thing he actually is my favorite boss. Anyway, sometimes he puts his face uh, right in front of you, like there, making for some easy shots. But occasionally, he, when you hit him enough times, he also gets stunned like this, making it even easier for you to deal with him. Normally, not uh, which time would activate after he punches like that, but uh, not in this difficulty. You can attack him from a huge distance using uh, Wicked Weaves, by the way. He's not difficult at all. Assuming you're careful uh, from his... Pretty powerful attacks. Anyway, yeah, we're gonna be seeing Temperentia two more times, and in both cases, it's not gonna be at all fighting him like that. Y you'll see. Also, here's uh, boss number three, major boss number three. That's that's probably I'm positive that's supposed to be your actual preview of that boss, but it's kind of lame. He doesn't talk. He doesn't say anything. Actually, I should call it a nit because it really is a nit. But he does do this, which makes the spin island float fairly quickly, although it slows down after a while. Gives you an opportunity to jump to the other side. You can take your time, you're not in a verse right now. If you fall into the abyss, you just lose a bit of health. And there's these enemies. I haven't seen those in a while. Come on. Grab! Yes! Get close! Come on! I want to hit you guys! Actually, I don't think this deals much damage, unfortunately. Oh, I actually it did. And I said not a lot of damage, but I meant combo points. Anyway, obviously now you're supposed to jump off this thing. It's gonna come up fairly soon. Right there. You're supposed to jump off right there. However, if you look all the way over there, there's... a number in treasure chest that we could have hopped off to, but... Unfortunately, the game sometimes uh, forces you to die, in a sense. Okay. We're up against some uh, kinships right now. So I'm going to put the bracelet of time on, because you want the bracelet of time on. After dodging the freaking million missiles, of course. Just continuously jam the freaking dodge button, seriously. You, you won't regret it. Activate bracelet of time. So that you can get a bit of advance on them and dodge all their missiles, please! And try not to fall into the abyss. The, the good... Ah, oh, jeez, really? Yeah, I got grabbed by those things. Careful of their lasers. Death beam lasers, they're pretty powerful. Um, You really don't want to get hit by any of these guys' attacks. Fortunately, this is pretty much the last time we ever see them. Oh, come on! I didn't even see those things! There. Okay. Yeah. Once you get hit by their missiles, it's a bunch of extra hits that you're getting. And it's just so much damage so very quickly. <sighs> Absolutely ridiculous. Anyway, we can finally go here. Open this chest. And there's another one all the way over there. I need crow form to reach it. That one contains a number in heart. Broken witch heart, rather. The other one I think contains a moon pearl, not positive. Anyway, that nightmare sequence is done with. Let's move on and hopefully not lose too much more health, otherwise I'm going to have to start using items. Um, are these enemies or not? I can't remember. Okay, no they aren't. Uh, I, I always thought they were. I'm pretty sure there's going to be dogs like this at some point, I think. Anyway, yeah. Healing, I absolutely need that. Um. I uh, want to unequip the brace of time right now. I Did I miss a nap time? Oh, I'm not positive. I guess I'll find out later on. Uh, these tentacles, fairly easy to dodge. They 
You can probably beast with it all the way through to play it safe, but uh, instead I'm taking my time because I got damaged. <laughs> uh, this statue of a dog does contain either a witch heart or a moon pearl. The statues down there contain actual enemies, and if you're playing on any other difficulty and not doing the half times, this would be the first time you ever meet Gracious and Glorious. Anyway, which... Actually, I already have the proper priest. It's a weapon I want to change. Yeah, I'm using the Durga glitch. Not taking chances with these fellows. One, two, three, four. Bye-bye. Yeah, one hit kill. Not screwing with those guys. Seriously. So irritating. I... I really do think they are weaker in the air, by the way. They seem to just not attack uh, you in the air as often. And wow, that was so much damage in one hit. Come on, just die. Died in the best way, fortunately enough. And also, fortunately enough, I don't really need any more health for the rest of this chapter. Except, actually, I do. I have to fight those fellows one more time. <laughs> What happened to Mummy? Well, you see, she just went to look for something, that's all. I can't believe that witch, placing a poor helpless child under her spell. If she did anything to this little girl's parents, I swear. <gasps> Mommy. No, no need to cry. We'll get you to your mom in no time. Uh, here, I've got some candy if you want. Mmm. What is this? It's yummy. I don't know. It's candy. Strawberry, I think. Hey, Kitty, I've got some yummies. Would you like some? Is that cat your friend? Yes, he is. His name is Cheshire. He's cute, isn't he? Cheshire. What a stupid name. Well, so much for taking the highway. That just means we're gonna have to find something else. Now, all I have to figure out is what to do about you. So, Cerecita, that woman's really your mom? Uh-huh. My mummy is strong, and she protects me from scary monsters. Monsters? <laughs> I don't think you know who the real monsters are. That cutscene is a bit longer than I remembered. Jeez. Anyway, I think... No, not yet, not yet. I have to go through this part, I believe. It's... Even if you get hit, it's not that much damage, and really, it's just dodge through the things as they come up. I've thought about not saying thing as often as I do lately. I I've come to, to terms that the fact that I kind of suck at saying that word, and I use it way too often. Anyway, yeah, you can break down this thing. Wow, look, look at me just use the word again. You can break down that wall, and I believe that's what triggers the halftime appearing. Yep, yeah, it's all the way over there. You guys see it? All the way over there. I'm not going through the tentacles again. Okay, you jump all the way over here. There's a chest. And this is an optional fight. If you touch those uh, statues. But I'm doing it anyway. And yes, it, they do attack you the moment you break their statue. Ah, oh, whatever. Torture attack. Okay. Can you let me charge now? Ah, oh, bleh. 
There. One down. Yeah, I should probably use the charged up attack of the uh, sword much more often. Enemies have trouble blocking it. And it's okay. Especially when it's fully charged. I'm definitely going to have to use it for the final bosses. Yeah, it's not so bad. I mean, I wasn't dealing, doing like super flashy combos or anything, but uh, I kept uh, control of the situation. I was able to easily deal with those guys. Pure Platinum, no less. Hmm. If I had known I'd gotten so many Platinums later on in this chapter, I would have actually uh, done the halftimes. Anyway, yeah, the Raven's right there. The, the Crow is right there. They always look like Ravens to me. Ravens are bigger than Crows, right? I think they are. Um, before I go down there, I want to point out that there's actually an area down here, and there's a Crow that will appear there in hard mode. It's one of the harder ones to find, if you ask me. And time to finish this chapter, basically. With some sort of kind of beloved. There's always two, so remember to look around. They barely... They, they, they deal lots of damage, but they don't have lots of health. Just don't get grabbed. Getting grabbed by these guys, kind of embarrassing. Anyway, yeah, as you defeat uh, one, uh, another one appears until you've taken care of all of them. One of the most important aspects of Bayonetta is knowing when you don't have to dodge. I think it's most important when you find these guys because they have very predictable attacks. Very, very predictable. Okay, where's the last one? And you can still fight one underwater. Bayonetta doesn't need to actually breathe. In fact, it's laggier when you're underwater, so I bet it's even easier to fight these guys. And I absolutely hate their stomp attack. Okay, now that that's done with, we can actually lift these statues and use them to freeze time. Well, not freeze time, but slow down time. Allowing us to easily damage these creatures and pretty much finish them before... Yeah, really. <laughs> finish them before they actually even attack you once. Unfortunately, you have to wait until the witch time de deactivates before the next one appears. Use the uh, R to actually see when they're about to come down, by the way. You can you can uh, like stun them without having to use the witch time, by the way. I I prefer not to though. Ah, come on. There we go. There's one more to take care of. I think there's only two to take care of in normal mode, though. Yeah, this is pretty much a gimme. This, this, this verse. I don't know how anyone can fail it once you realize what you're supposed to do. Like, even if there's another one of these creatures that appears, it's, it's just the same process for me to defeat it. Oh, just a platinum? I, I, oh yeah, I got hit by the beloved's uh, foot. I don't believe you can actually reach the platform over there without using this. And once you do... Actually, come to think of it, in Chapter 6, could you use the Brace of the Time to actually sequence break? Well, probably not. Anyway, yeah, that's pretty much the end of the chapter. I don't believe there's any half times I've missed besides the two that I skipped. But we're about to find out right now. Okay, no. It was just those two half times. And yes, I definitely could have gotten a platinum if I had done them. God damn it. Yep, we're back where we were two chapters ago. What a waste of time. Like, seriously, what... What happened while we were in Paradiso? Besides just, you know, filler. We saw the flashback again. Uh, Luca and Cereza just spent some time dallying around. And that's pretty much it. 
Well, I suppose there's also that creepy voice in our head that talked to us at the beginning of chapter 9, but yeah, pretty much nothing happened. It was just to pad out the length of the game. I suppose the stages themselves were fun, though. Hope you've all enjoyed this video and hope you all have a nice day. Next time, the faces of evil!